afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is video True Nerd, and welcome back to Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion, where we're gonna start off today with some flipping action. Spurius Flavius, the most Christian man who ever Christians, is leading possibly the strongest army we have ever put together. And we need to kick the arse of some flipping Saxons, who look like they're coming at me with mostly just a big old pile of infantry, which we should be able to handle with our Comets 10 sets. So let's start off his bloody crusade by chopping down some Saxons. They've also actually got very little cavalry, so actually I feel like the best thing I could probably do would be take my cavalry round this way, murder their mercenary barbarian-like cavalry, and then I'll be in a good position to just start sweeping round, slamming them in the back, and then we can do the classic Total War roll-up. My archers are starting to lay down some fire over here. This is all fine. Cavalry, just start moving around the outskirts, get into a good position. In come the units. Oh, they've actually decided to bring their warlord directly into the center to be hit by all of the peeler. Oh, genius. Flip it, genius. Your best unit, it's already half dead. Yeah, there we go. The front line's already starting to break. When it comes to just straight up chunking, you can't beat a Comet of Ten, says. And down goes their leader as well. Nice and easy. We didn't even need the flanking maneuver. Everything's already well in hands. Though weirdly, they seem very keen to engage with their mercenary cavalry against my mercenary cavalry. Despite the fact that, you know, I've actually got heavy cavalry and three times as much cavalry as them. And their leader's already dead, but... All right, fine, whatever. Yeah, I thought you might want to break almost immediately, actually. Spot on. Oh, I think I just heard the fallback command. Yeah, they've given up. They didn't stand a chance. Once you've actually got a full army on the field, it is a damn good army. Unless, of course, it runs into higher tech barbarian stuff, where they've got a lot of armor piercing. But uh, on this occasion, they did not. Now, some losses, about 400 men, but I'd say we're still an effective fighting force and uh, the invasion of Britain can very much still continue. Oh, never mind, they want to actually try again, but this time with a worse army. Good luck with- Ooh! This time I think it's your entire family, they're about to vandal right into me. All right then, I won't stop ya. All right, here they come. I've gone for a very narrow boxed-in formation. And yeah, they're going to have, presumably, the Warlords. There's the Grail Knights right there. Hunters. What little infantry they've got, which is, yeah, very, very heavily dependent on uh, mercenaries, actually. Though that's probably actually much more hardcore than the Saxon Keels. This might not be precisely the walkover I was expecting, but they won't be able to get through the Comet of Ten says. They might, however, irritatingly be able to do enough damage that I might want to fall back to Vika's Frankie just to actually do some retraining. We'll have to see about that. Yeah, they've actually got themselves a lot of cavalry over on this flank. I don't like that one little bit. Guys, start running. Start running, start running, start running. We know there's multiple warlords floating around here. And I don't actually have that much in the way of spears, but at least I can get... Yeah, there we go. In come the flipping peeler. You are very, very screwed. You want to send the mercenary Galaglass at me? I will deploy flipping mercenary golden bands at you. Good luck with that. All right, so the front line is very, very much struggling to pierce my front line. That's fine. The mercenary Galaglasses are really, really solid. So I'm going to bring my cavalry over in this direction. My spearmen are trying to take care of this warlord. No, that's not my spearmen. That's a golden band. And sadly, they've broken apart. Fine. My archers are a little bit exposed over here, which is a shame. But what can you do? And you guys just get around over here. I'm just going to roll up the line starting here and then uh, moving inwards because, yeah, there's actually there's actually a bit of damage going on here to my troops. Get in on the flipping gala glasses, please. Just basically surround them as far as you can because I'm not liking the number of... Wait, what the hell is going on here? What is happening? Why are the Comets 10 says breaking? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, the front line has just collapsed. The front line has just collapsed. What the hell is going on here? Right, get over there. Use the horse to provide a new front line as best as you can. We need to basically assassinate their flipping leader right now. And I'm not enjoying this one bit, actually. Um, Spurious, what the hell just happened? What did you do? I've no idea how the Comets 10 says just broke. But something has just gone awfully Awfully wrong. I suspect it's just the warlord and the archers. How are the archers not breaking? 
I do not know what's going on here. Right, well, we may as well try and pick off as much as we flipping can. If we just slam into these guys, they're eager technically, but with charge bonuses, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. They are now wavering and broken. I don't know how the hell my archers are holding on, but comment to 10 says broke, but okay, that's all fine. There's more going on over here as well. You guys, hunters, the more units that have broken around the edge of the battle, the more likely we can actually break the center. Can I just win this with cavalry? I don't even know. Shaken. Yeah, there we go. You've broken. Move forward. Attack them. What the hell happened during this battle? I do not know. I guess they just had enough really elite mercenary cavalry to carry the day by themselves. We can kill a very large number of them and the archers are finally all breaking. Which is not too surprising really. What the hell's actually left on the field right now? It's the warlord with 34 strength. It is... Uh, hang on. More warlords. Yeah, possibly it's just warlords. They just threw all their warlords into us and... Uh, oh, you poor bastards. I'm so sorry. Right, hit the mercenary veterinary, because right now you are nowhere near to... Oh, they've just swarmed us. And it's Sarmatian archers as well. Oh, they are elite. Right, that... Well, that's not gone as I was expecting. Guys, get off the field if you can, bloody hell. I think it might be time to go, actually. I think it might be very much time to go. Lads, retreat. There's not much more we can do. Well, actually, I say this. I've still got 70 heavy cavalry. If I can kill all of their leaders, I still technically win. Oh, but they've got the flippin' Sarmatian archers, and they are... They're out for blood. They're very much out for blood, and they're really, really, really heavily armed. We're not gonna be able to take them down. Bring the cavalry round over here. I think we might be able to assassinate at least one of their leaders. This has been a disaster. What the hell happened? Yeah, the problem is they've still got 90 heavy cavalry between the three units. If I engage, I might lose Spurious Flavius. The priority is he needs to escape. Right, it's time to go. Bloody hell, though. Okay, so on reflection, we might have to postpone the invasion of Britain. How did they get 2,000 kills? You know, I really thought things were going well, and then everything went to hell, which is pretty much how this campaign goes. The Huns have attacked the Goths, which is probably the one horde war they can actually win. Because the Goths have got basically flipping nothing at all. So the Goths are probably about to form a horde that's probably heading straight towards me. The Saxons probably want some revenge and... Oh my goodness, basically nothing survived. Like, nothing survived. Oh no. Spurious, take the survivors and get the hell out of here. Get back down to Vicus Frankie. Those troops who were sending south to help out in Italy, screw it, get them back north. Frankish assassin, well you could just shove right off. One advantage, we've now got an armorer, so we can actually, yeah, get the armor a bit stronger. Which is good, because you guys bloody collapsed. Okay, if you guys could just like hold on for a minute and not attack York, that would be really appreciated. So that right there is pretty much the perfect example of how the Western Roman Empire campaign goes in this game, which is just when you think you're starting to get control of things, just when you've won a major military victory and you've actually defeated the bloody vandals and everything's looking good, then everything immediately starts going to hell because the Goths are coming in momentarily and some barbarians up north just completely trash my best army. So, okay, this is not the end of the world. There are some advantages. Number one, we're not paying for all of those guys who just died. We don't have to like pension off their families or whatever. So we're going to be making a lot of money very quickly, which will help us rebuild. And also, as we've actually started moving our armies yeah, into big cities to actually fall back and defend, we can put up the taxes a fair bit. That is, uh, yeah, that's a decent amount more money coming out of Londinium right there. Obviously, we need more troops being trained as fast as possible. Even though it's more expensive, uh, I'm gonna start training troops in Vicus Alemanni as well, and then just retrain them at Vicus Franchi. I know that's really expensive because, yeah, you have to pay once to train them and then pay again to retrain them, but because you can only train one unit at a time, but retraining you can do as many as fit inside the recruitment queue all in one go, it does get me an army on the field faster. So more comment to 10 says, please, that'd just be flipping spot on. Now, the army's down south, because we might want to potentially do something with some of them. So, yeah, we've got these lovely auxilia palatina right here. Hardcore elite spearmen, the best spears in the empire. 
Let's get them moving north right over here. They can join up with, yeah, some lovely spearmen, or actually even better, Comet 10 says. Apparently, we've actually got Legion Barracks here at Ravenna. That'll flip and do the job right there. Yeah, just train as much as we flipping can. As for Caius Flavius, yeah, the Emperor himself, he could head over here to try and defend against the possibility of a Gothic Horde, but... Probably best he just wipes up these little rebels first. We just want to get these guys out of the way nice and fast. And then I think he could do with some retraining. Perfect world. I might actually send him all the way down to Rome purely so he can actually get himself silver weapons and silver armor. Because that way, yeah, these guys will hit a lot flipping harder. Plus two, plus two on every single one of these troops. Not bad at all. And yeah, this is nothing. It's just a handful of step raiders, though. Don't underestimate them. Defense of 12, melee attack of 8. They'll actually put up a good fight in melee. Still, we should be able to just run these guys down with cavalry. Here we go. They're already running in the face of cav. We'll just hit them in the rear to pin them. Then these guys will just get around the other side. Slam them in the back. They should break pretty quickly. So you guys just get over here. Hit these guys over on the side. Charge bonuses for days. Job flipping done. Army number one mopped up. Move on to army number two. No issue whatsoever. And the rest of them go down just the same. Right, we'll move the emperor here. Yeah, having him just nip over to Rome for a visit would not be the worst thing in the world. And Rome... Actually, Rome technically doesn't have highways right now. So... Okay, I could actually save up for urban barracks. What does that actually get me, by the way? Ah, yes, the first cohort. So these guys are basically a standard unit of Comet 10 says. A bit more expensive, mind you, but with some big advantages. One, 240 soldiers. That is, I believe, 50% more men than you get as standard. Yeah, 50% more men, which is very, very nice indeed. And as a first cohort, they are holding a legionary eagle. So as a result of that, they're passing on benefits to the units around them. So they can be very, very useful indeed. Stat-wise, they're just a tiny bit better too. It's not much, but yeah, it's a little bit more on the armor, a little bit more on the defense skill. They hit a tiny bit harder. They're a solid unit, but arguably, they're not good enough to actually justify the cost to build an entire army off them. But one at the center of the army just to provide benefits to the units around them could be very, very good indeed. But instead, I had a different plan in mind, which is if we're having problems up north dealing with barbarian armies, maybe we don't want to take them on in a straight-up fight. Maybe it's time we started using some Roman technology to our advantage. Here we go. Onagers, scorpions, heavy onagers, carriage ballista. Yeah, this is good stuff right here. Because the Celts and the Saxons are both not horde factions. If I just move around them and destroy their cities, they'll become rebels, they'll lose their strongest units, we'll be able to pick them off a lot more easily. Potentially having some onagers in the army could be very, very useful indeed. So I'm going to get some onagers into production right now and start shipping them north. And to assist with that, yeah, we'll actually get some highways into production across the empire right here. Highways in Rome, highways in Mediolanium. Let's just make sure everyone we're trained down here can get up north in a hurry. Because as time goes by, the military infrastructure we have at Rome being able to produce high quality artillery, we're going to be needing that more and more. So being able to get units moving as fast as possible north out of Rome will be very, very useful. Ah yes, and paved roads over here in Africa are done as well now. We have got ourselves a good army here. I think it's time for us to make that move out. Though I can't help but be a little bit worried by... Yeah, there's a tiny force down over there. Those guys could actually be planning to attack Lepkis Magna. If they do, they'll probably win as well. That's no good at all. You know what? If it happens, it happens. Lepkis Magna is not a big deal. We're better off just starting to take on these armies and smashing apart these guys' infrastructure. So what I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, pretty much bring the entire flipping army with me. With the exception of just some Limitane right there. So you guys can be... They've fallen back onto a bridge, haven't they? Oh, that's so flipping annoying. That's the one place I don't want to fight them. Then again, they've got basically no ranged units whatsoever. We took out the Desert Archers, so uh, it's mostly just infantry. I think my archers might actually have a shot anyway. We can probably win that one anyway. Screw it, I'm going to give it a go. I think we can pull it off. Here we go. They're going to try and defend the crossing. And possibly they're planning to... 
They might be planning to counterattack. Hang on, I'm just going to bring in some spears uh, just in case. Yeah, they're actually trying to get across the bridge. Okay, well, I've got this here cohort just guarding the bridge, so this actually works for me because these guys are going to... Oh, bloody hell, you guys are set to skirmish. Do not skirmish, please. Do not skirmish. Yep, for some reason, even though they're defensive ones, they've decided they're going to try and get across the bridge. Which, yeah, really works for me because it means they're just basically walking into the jaws of death. By the way, I see some units trying to swim over there. There we go. There's a swimming animation. It's a really weird animation. I kind of love it. Yeah, they just kind of vaguely flop in the water and then there's weird blue bubbles around them. By the way, my archers are just tearing your units apart. You did not want to flip and do this. So uh, how about we just get you over to here? That will be absolutely fine. And yeah, if we can... Are you guys getting swept away? No, they're changing their direction. Lovely. So at this point, yeah, my archers are just firing into the crowd here. They are in a lot of flipping trouble. This is going to be spot on. And as soon as the first unit starts to break, they'll probably all start breaking. It'll just cause a bit of a mass rout. Yep, there we go. In it comes and deploy the calf, by which I mean the camels and also the general. Screw it. Go, 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 go. So yeah, we've taken some very, very light knocks, but honestly, this has actually worked out pretty well for me, because hang on, why are you taking knocks? Who's... who's hurting you exactly? Hang on, fall back. I don't know what's going on here, but it's bad. Oh, it was the flipping mercenary crossbowmen. They were totally firing into the rear of these guys. Dear, oh dear. Still, good chance for my general to get some nice, easy kills, and if we're lucky, a little bit of XP for his trouble as well. Also, the peasants attempting to swim across the river didn't work out particularly well. Yeah, they're very vulnerable while they're swimming, so if you can pick them off with the Comets 10 says or the Archers or whatever, they are flipping destroyed. Also, get out of the water, lads. You're supposed to be chasing them down. So apparently... Right, these horses are just swimming. I didn't even know they did that, but apparently they do that. But yeah, you can see that it's a very, very slow movement. That's how swimming is balanced. So, in the end, yeah, we've taken very, very few casualties, we're still a very effective fighting force, and those guys have been wiped out. That was definitely the right decision to make. However, making sure that Carthage doesn't rebel uh, could be more of an issue. Those guys move over to... Ouch. Daily Games is still only at 70%. And apparently we... Oh, we don't have the money. Right, train one peasant unit, that'll be... Alright, how about I send something back towards you guys? What do you guys actually need. If I send you just a handful more troops, will you be okay? I tell you what, I'll send them the cav. Because if I send them the cav, the cav can catch up later because they've got more movement points. Toss in the spearmen and apparently we've got ourselves a deal. So retrain those guys at the same time and the main army can start moving out. Lovely. Yet, yeah, because this guy is not just his influence, he's also picked up, what is it? Upright. Plus six to law. Very, very good trait indeed. So Carthage is going to be making us less money in taxes, but it's fine. We've got plenty of money right now because we've got, like, you know, no armies because they just died to the Saxons. So everything's under control. And Appius the Honest is now going on the flipping warpath. It's time to put the Berbers down once and for flipping all. Okay, a handful of big unknowns right now. The Saxons, are they planning to immediately counterattack and take back Campus Frisi? Because if they are, can't really stop them. The Burgundians, why are they floating around nearby to our borders? What are they flipping doing there? And most important of all, are the Huns going to keep up with this siege against the Goths? And if they are, are they going to win? Because I'd say they should do, but they've lost fights I thought they should win in the past. It is kind of a dice roll at this point. So we'll see what happens there. Let's flip and end the turn. Okay, at Colonia Dacia, the siege continues. They're just building, yes, yeah, some flipping siege equipment and... Oh wow, they only build one ram because they've only got one person left to actually push it. But on the other hand, they do actually have, yeah, some really, really heavy cavalry belonging to the actual leaders of the faction. And let's just say we know from experience with the Saxons how tough those bastards are. In short, they've got an answer to all of these guys. And good news up north, the Saxons have fallen back, presumably trying to rebuild their shattered army because we did win one major victory before we had the major loss. And the Burgundians seem to have fallen back too. Okay, it's not all bad news. So, Spurius Flavius continues falling backwards towards Vicus Franchi, where he needs to get himself retrained. Vicus Franchi itself is... Oh, look at that. The actual armourer is done. The units we're training here are getting better and flipping better. 
And I'm going to do it. Caius Flavius is heading down to Rome to get his army into tip-top flipping shape. Let's get them improved weapons and armor. The troops we've already trained, however. Yep, yeah, Ravenna, you guys join up there. We've got ourselves a decent force heading north to join up with the armies of Spurius Flavius. And to speed up the rest of the forces, uh, here we go. Let's actually just get some flipping highways down here. And we have definite confirmation here. The Berbers are moving in. Alright, we might just be able to handle this, however. Three Limitane, if they're just sallying forth, do actually have the peeler for missile damage of eight, which is not terrible. And Appius the Honest continues his march into Berber territory. Now, there is a force here we should be able to take out no problem at all. So we'll probably start with that, and then we need to swing down south. I believe their cities are somewhere around here, and then somewhere way over here. So, uh, yeah, we'll take out the south one first, and then we'll just swing through. They're already Christian, so they won't be too difficult to keep hold of if we exterminate them. So, uh, if we can just knock out the Berber threat once and for all, that would be spot on. Real problems starting to emerge on some of our cities as they grow, however. Yeah, Syracuse is down to 70 flipping percent, meaning they're now up to daily games. We need to either Christianize that place, or double down on paganism, or maybe just... Yeah, if I get a market down, I think I can actually get up to... No, public baths is as good as it's going to get for the time being. I think we just need to get that place up to a proconsul's palace, but I can't afford it at the minute. On the plus side, however, no movement from the Eastern Empire. Aquincum is still at strength. I believe that is Marcus the Gambler over there. Yeah, Marcus the Gambler. Not exactly a great army, but it'll do the job with the walls. It'll be fine for the time being. No movement from the Franks either. That's good too. And the Celts are starting to get really, really, really flipping scary, but they're not moving in. If we can just hold off for long enough... Yeah, going over here, smash their capital. Move over here, smash this city. This army won't be able to do anything if I just break in the same turn with the Onagers. And now we know the Saxons aren't actually coming. Yeah, we do actually have uh, some young people floating around here. Confident commander, sharp Christian. Yeah, go on then, my good man. Have fun managing this place. Just get its income up a tiny bit. Though arguably, you might do a better job over here... Because this place actually has a decent level of trade volume. So, uh, Sharp is a very, very good trait. Maybe shipping him over there is a good idea. Oh, and bad news. Uh, we're actually going to lose Salona to the Eastern Empire. They've managed to get their armies over there first. And that is... Uh, that's a scary army. Not sure where that's actually come from. Because Sirmium still seems to be under strength. That possibly is marched up from down in Greece somewhere. But yeah, they're going to take that no problem whatsoever. We need to keep an eye on the Eastern Empire. They have got a lot of strength on our borders right now. Still, if we're very, very lucky indeed, the Goths might actually head south and trash some of that for us. If we're unlucky, they'll actually just head straight west towards Aquincum. Well, for now, the holding pattern continues. We're just desperately trying to rebuild. So end the turn and... The Goths are still... Oh, it's the Burgundians. Right, so the Burgundians are actually declaring war on us. Good. The Berbers have put us under siege as well. That's fine. Hopefully we can handle that. So obviously everyone in the world wants a flip in peace. What have they even sent against us? Oh, bloody hell, it's Berserkers. Okay, Berserkers are serious badasses. All right. You can take them down with archers because they're not desperately well defended, but... Okay. Right, so the guy I just sent to Campus Freesey, he's dead. He's 100% dead. There's nothing we're doing to those guys. Oh, and the Eastern Empire is obviously allied with the Burgundians because the Eastern Empire are just dicks. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so we've got a new horde on the field. The Goths are actually on the flipping move. Where are they? Because, yeah, these guys haven't settled here. The Huns are still coming. I can see some Goths over there. Um, which, which way did they go? Are they over, are they over here? Because I can see you. Where's the rest of you? Oh, there they are. Sorry, I missed them. They're actually right outside of Quincum because the game gives them a bit of a head start. So they're already flipping here. Right, they are actually inside our borders right now. Okay, so what we're going to do is have a chat to them about how we're going to be friends, aren't we? We're going to be friends. They've decided they don't want an alliance right now. Oh, good. This is, this is exactly what I wanted to see. Get out of the bloody way, you bastards. We're busy. 
they're just going to take a Quinkum off me, aren't they? I mean, they might be able to. It's not the biggest group, it's only four. When hordes are created, they're not the biggest, but it's still pretty bloody terrifying. Okay, a Quinkum, just get some more defense down, please. Heavy infantry, if they want to fight, make them fight on the walls. If they want a Quinkum, they're going to have to flip and bleed for it. Oh, Gallus Nobilior, I'm so flipping sorry, but I don't think you're surviving this one. It's not going to happen. At the moment, we just need to focus on getting the army back up and running. And here we go. Now we should be able to start doing some really nice badass retraining here. This is expensive flipping stuff, but we've got to do it. Not the light cav, though. Merge those guys to... No, not those guys, however, because that will cease to exist. But, okay, retrain just those guys and then just keep training more. The more important thing is to get out the Sarmatian Auxilia. That'd be good stuff. Reinforcements have made it to Augusta Vindelicorum, but it's going to take them a while to make it up to Vicus Frankie. They're still some way off. The highways are being produced, but it's going to take another three turns before they're done here. And as for the Emperor, he just needs to murder these bastards. Get out of the cocking way, please. You know what? They've got no range. Let's just get some free XP off these guys. Here we go. We've got a nice uphill position right here. And now our archers have got a beautiful height advantage to just shoot down on these bastards. They will flipping melt. And any attempt to actually push up the hill at ours leads to all the peeler in the world. Gotta love all the peeler in the world. Every peeler in the world is a good thing to throw at your enemy. Alright, wiped out with no severe casualties. Just got to actually, yeah, get all of you guys out of Rome. So there's actually, you know, space for the Emperor. Sorry, there's no space for anyone else right now. Alright then, flipping priorities. Let's actually just get, yeah, the infantry fixed up. The Comet 10 says that are particularly badly wounded. They're the priority. Get them with silver, silver. This is going to take more than one turn, however. Which might be just fine because, yeah, two turns uh, lets me train a carriage ballista. And those guys are hilarious. And I guess the former functionary Decimus Flavius can just, yeah, escort the oranges a little bit further north, begin their journey with them. And honestly, we've got some mercenary ballista right here. Yeah, go for it. I'll bring that along too. One thing worthy of note on the map here. Technically, according to the actual little star, the location of the Gothic Horde is right here. Because this is where their faction air is. I'm not sure why it's not on their faction leader, but screw it, the game says they're here. Which makes me think if we're very lucky, these forces will fall back to try and regroup with this guy momentarily. Which might just bring them very, very close by to the Eastern Romans. Down south in Africa, however, that army that was hanging out right here by the watchtower has gone missing. Though it might be in these forests over here. The problem is... If I actually send my army down over here, Carthage might be vulnerable. But I'm going to put my faith in the units I've left behind together with the walls. That should be enough. So I'm just going to send you straight down over here at their city, which I believe is somewhere around this point. Now, do I want to sally forth from Lepkis Magna here? How much have you guys actually got? Hillmen, Axemen, Desert Archers probably better we actually let them come to us because if we wait for them to attack us then they have to try and attack us on the plaza when my limitane cannot break which is their one weakness they break all of the time so uh, yeah screw it i'm gonna let them come to me the alternative is i could actually ship the cavalry south because they could just pick off the desert archers and then they'd be significantly weakened okay that's worth having a think about also get some more heavy infantry here we're probably going to be needing it if I actually send the cav out of the city, that doesn't make a difference. Fine. Deploy the cav south. I'm sending cavalry and camelry down to go and intercept you bastards. Okay, what have we got going on next? Burgundians have not attacked. Okay, no one has attacked. And uh, good. The Goths, for the moment at least, have decided to fall back from Aquincum. They have not declared war on me immediately. And the Huns appear to be heading south. This is good news. Let's have them throw their strength straight against the flipping eastern cities. Let's see them take Thessalonica. That is nice and rich and badly defended. Good target, guys. Very good target. Salona, meanwhile, has yet yeah, inevitably fallen to these bastards who have got themselves a, a decent-sized army, if a little bit propped up, with Limitane. And yeah, I've already Christianized this place. They won't have a problem with that, so this all works for me. 
Good, good, good. This will be fine. In fact, actually, what did you guys rebuild? Wow, they rebuilt Legion Barracks here. The Western Roman Rebels really invested in this place. Now, we've got some Burgundians coming in right now, including, yeah, more Berserkers. Here we flipping go. Hit points of 2, defense is only 9, but attack of 15 with a charge bonus of 7. And they can go Berserk, and of course, they've got excellent morale and all of that good stuff. These guys will chop through anything. They are very, very scary. But as part of a small army, we might be able to do a decent job here. Right, Spurius Flavius, what have you actually got inside this city right now? Five solid legions, three units of supporting spearmen, a mercenary golden band, three units of archers, one heavy cav, two light cav. Not terrible. Not willing to pay that much for mercenaries, though. If it had been a mercenary golden band, I'd have gone for it. Is that enough firepower to take out the berserkers without significant losses? I mean, it probably should be. This is a good time to pick them off when they don't have a general presence. And if I can take out these guys, yeah. If you're about to kill one of my lads, I'm going straight over to Campus Chatty to go and take out one of yours. Down south, meanwhile, cavalry moves in to try and intercept this force before they move in. They've not even built siege equipment yet, so that's not too bad at all. These guys have made it down here, put down a new little watchtower. We found a handful of rebels, we can just run straight through them. And yeah, maybe the city's more like here, I forgot the road kind of, yeah, tweaked down in this direction. But that's fine, we should be able to just walk straight through their defences. At this point, we have got the superior troops. The Berbers do not have the best army. Decimus Flavius, you actually head into Ravenna. Oh yeah, look at that. Massive increase in the upkeep. The cavalry are going to help escort the artillery further north because there are rebels popping up everywhere. In fact, you know what? For safety, I think these guys should probably fall back and join up with the artillery just to make sure everything's as it should be. Here we go. Got a better view of this guy thanks to my spy in the region that I trained down at Vicus Franchi, I believe. No, hang on. It was at Vicus Alemanni, actually. So, we know what these guys have got. It is uh, not much. Their front line is just the Berserkers, one spear warband. Nothing much we can't handle. Let's actually just send you uh, further north. Have a little loopsy right here. Oh yeah, that's looking vulnerable, isn't it? Yeah, that'd be spot on. And don't forget to do all the retraining in Rome. We still can't do it in two turns either. Okay, what's the least and most important thing? Catholic priests, not so important. I mean, it would be nice to... Oh, bloody hell, some of this is really expensive. Right, Augusta Vindelicorum, you do not need a trader. I've been cancelling this to actually pay for other things for a long time, but screw it, that's going to continue for the minute. Uh, what do we need to actually prioritise right now? We need good quality spearmen. That's certainly important. The Salmation Auxilia need to be... Yeah, that needs to be done too. That is very, very important indeed. We can probably do with, yeah, one archer not having access to improved weaponry. That's fine. My general will not have... Oh, my general. My general would really, really like to have improved weapons and armor, but we might have a flipping choice. I might need to start them moving back towards the Goths really, really flipping soon. By the way, you guys, more archers. If need be, give them hell from the walls. Screw it, we need to make it happen. I'm sending Spurius Flavius directly against the main Burgundian force. And they know they're in flipping trouble too. They know they're outgunned here. Right, nice compact box here. Because otherwise those berserkers are going to give us hell. Start the battle. Now they appear to have the uphill advantage and also they've got the range advantage. Their archers are superior to mine. But we should be able to actually... Oh, look at those bastards. Yeah, berserkers with great swords. This ain't gonna be fun. This ain't gonna be fun in the flipping slightest. Let's actually start getting cavalry moving off in this direction. You guys off to one flank. You guys off to one flank too. We'll probably come under attack from the hunters momentarily. Yeah, the Lombard archers are gonna be moving forward. They will have the range. In fact, we might have no choice but to basically charge up to them. Even if they're not actually engaging us right now, I think we need to actually get closer, because otherwise they will just pick us off. Or at the bare minimum, get our own archers into range of their berserkers. Then I'm willing to accept the counterfire. In fact, you know what? Probably you guys, the cavalry, need to be not involved in this formation anymore. Do you have a shot at those guys? Yes, they've now got a shot at the archers. That's probably fine. Uh, stop for a second. 
Break up this formation. And now the formation's fine, but not the cavalry. The cavalry need to naff off and do their own thing. So you guys just go and do all of that. And you guys are part of a new formation. The infantry forms the formation. The cavalry needs to be more free-floating. Right, the Lombard archers are starting to take some knocks because I've got more archers and my archers do have good experience. There are some light cavalry over there. We should be able to chase them off the field, actually. And in come the... There's a spear wall ban right there. Are you guys all on? Yes, you guys are all on fire at well. Good. Those archers are way off at the side. We should be able to go and get them. Chase off the cav over there if you'd be so kind. We should be able to just basically get them off the field. That is, yeah, the spear wall band. If they head over here, we just need to back off. I do not want to get caught in position. No, they're heading in a different direction. That's fine. Right now, their archers aren't doing too much. There's a bunch of berserkers over there. We're going to be able to chase off these guys. Come on, break, 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 break. And they're broken. And now, pull away. Do not engage the flipping berserkers. You guys get over here. That is, that's more archers being taken out right now. Okay, that's good. You guys pull over here as well. The berserkers are now berserking. This works for me because now I can just lead them on a lovely merry dance. So you guys, who are you going for? I want you over here. I want you over here as well. These cav are okay for the time being. Those berserkers are... No, I probably don't want to engage them directly actually. I'd rather pull you back over here. Okay, this is going well so far. I'm happy with all of this. And now, while they're confused and don't know where they want to go, it's time to actually, yeah, just charge my main line forward, move my archers in range of all of their infantry. But keep my cavalry floating at the sides, ready to move in if they charge. A charge into the back of their actual berserkers would be lovely. Guys, open fire on those berserkers. I want them flipping dead. Right, the actual cav is coming back over here. Once again, slam into those bastards, chase them off, I want them flipping gone. These guys do not have a general. The Warhounds are present but have not been released yet. And the Berserkers are, the Berserkers are coming in. The Berserkers are coming in. Which unit are they aiming themselves at right now? I don't know. No, they've decided against, oh this is really, really good news. The Berserkers have been taken out before they can actually do anything productive. I believe the Warhounds have been released at my cavalry. So the cav on this flank is just going to basically lead those dogs to the other side of the battlefield. I don't actually care anymore. So, have the dogs been... No, the dogs have not been released. But for every human you kill before the dogs are released, yeah, the dog automatically flipping dies. What's left over here? Some berserkers who are not happy, but my front line is basically untouched. This has gone pretty much as well as I'd hope it could do. This is actually pretty damn solid. And screw it, go for a charge into the side of those berserkers, give them a poke, and they've immediately broken. Right, pull back out again, pull back out again, pull back out again. This is only light cav on this flank, remember, it's my general and the light cav, so we're not doing much. They've just lost a unit, so their line's going to now try and redraw itself up in a more sensible order, but they're going to get confused very, very fast indeed. That spear band is in a lot of flipping trouble. Bring up the cavalry. The Lombard archers are trying to get into position to actually fill the gaps in the line, but they'll be torn apart by my archers. Oh, this is just going flipping lovely right now. In fact, it looks like the Burgundian cavalry wants to take on my faction leader. All right. I won't flip and say no. We'll just knacker their leader like that. Where's the cav on the other flank? Oh, it's way over here. It's way over flipping here. Right, take out these archers. These guys won't stand up to much. And down you go, you stupid bastards. And are they about to release the dogs? I think they're about to release the dogs. Go, 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 go. Back off, back off. Yes, the dogs have now been released. So now I'm going to send you all the way over there because screw any of that business. And while the actual dogs are busy chasing cavalry that they will never catch up to, we'll just slam into the last of their units with our cavalry. This will be fine. In fact, you know what? It's time to send forward the infantry to wrap this up, actually. There we flipping go. And there we go. The dogs have officially broken, which I think doesn't make these guys break. I think these guys are just going to basically continue chasing for the rest of time. But that should be absolutely fine. We'll just basically move them over to... Here, this should be a good spot. All right, we've won that with actually far fewer casualties than I was expecting. That's very good news because that means we might, just might have a chance of relieving Campus Freesy before it falls. Oh no. Oh, the Goths are awesome. Yep, the Goths are coming in. Oh, Marcus, I'm so sorry. Oh, and it's not much better for flipping Gallus Nobilior. 
He's about to be attacked by... I'm amazed you're giving him an 8 to 9 ratio. Alright, that's... That's weird. Like, there's no flipping chance he's winning this one, but... Actually, in all fairness... 8 to 9 ratio, that means auto-resolve actually probably gives me a better chance of victory than trying to fight this does. Unless we could... Well, how are we going to do this? I mean, presumably, he's got himself, yeah, one ram. If I could take out the one bit of siege equipment they've got, I might stand a chance. Screw it, we'll give it a flipping go. Here we go, one unit of berserkers on the ram. If we could take those guys out and then demolish the ram... Maybe. Just maybe. It depends how well they decide to actually defend the ram with their other units. Let's see what's going on here. I'm just going to, yeah, forward deploy my general out of the gates here. Right, they're moving forward. They are moving forward. Right, everybody. Everybody out of the city. Like, flipping now, if you'd be so kind. Our best chance is probably to toss all of the peeler at everybody and then just basically slam into this guy over and over again. You, I need you to slow him down, all right? Charge bonuses right into the side of these guys. They do not have the best defense and there is counter-attacking going on here. Screw it, that's done some good work, that's done some good work. Pull back, pull back, pull back. Do not engage, do not engage fully. Those guys are now going to flipping Rampage, which works for me. We'll just lead them off in a different direction. The other units are also following. Okay, and then we've got the mercenaries over here. Those guys have recovered. You're over here for some flipping reason. Maybe not quite like that. Go, 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 go. We've got the mercenary golden band. Chase them down. Their general's right flipping there. They've got cavalry coming in here. Focus on the light cavalry. If I could actually have a fight, general to general, directly in front of a tower... I mean, I'm not sure if we can win that one, but it's the best flipping bet we've got. I'm going to engage him right here, because the tower is going to be firing into the rear of this guy. We might be able to take out their flipping general, but oh, this has already gone to hell. Right, so we've taken out these bastards. That's fine. The gate's also just opened, which is good. Guys, 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 pull back, pull back, pull back. Do not engage rampaging berserkers, but actually, they're all rampaging. And while they're rampaging... They can't actually push the ram, because those are the flipping rules. So lead them away here. How are we doing? 32 versus 38. Yeah, unfortunately, Barbarian Cavalry is superior. We're shooting it. Oh, my general's really exposed. I see him right... To the He's surrounded. Where's their general? Where's their flipping general? Okay, our guys decided to just flip and run for it. He hasn't been killed immediately. The Limetane have actually broken. I think that's... No, that's the end. That's the end. We were never going to win that one. That's just a flipping no-go. Oh, Gallus Nobilior, I'm so flipping sorry. Oh, but here's fun. Simeon has officially fallen to the rebels. Oh, that's very good news. And the Huns are definitely walking in this direction. So the Huns are going to start causing a lot of trouble for the Eastern Empire in this part of the world. They are not having a fun time of it right now. Hordes are right here. One of their cities has decided to flip. This is lovely. Oh, and the Burgundy and the Lombardy are now allies. So the Lombardy are probably going to come in and start causing trouble for us pretty bloody soon. Well, that's just marvellously good news. Still, we have the army of Spurius Flavius right here. And it looks to me like, yeah, these settlements are not desperately well defended. We might be able to just basically smash some of the forces right here on our way back north to the Saxon capital. Because that's not even the full army. Bear in mind, we've got reinforcements coming in here. Just actually reunite all of these bastards. Uh, these guys are on their way to Vicus Franchi. And when they get there, and when they get retrained a little bit, this is going to be a seriously badass force. And speaking of badass forces, uh, oh yeah, the Roman Emperor himself is ready to march out. Decimus Flavius, you head back over here. Yep, just keep Rome nice and steady. Thank you. We are heading back north. This time with some seriously hardcore legionaries, some good supporting spearmen, plenty of archers, and our first ever bit of mobile artillery, the carriage ballista. These guys are very, very good at picking off general units if you can get them into a good position. Okay, we've had a difficult turn, but it's time for the fight back to begin. Spurius Flavius is back inside enemy territory. And the most Christian man who ever Christianed is going to make these barbarian bastards holy. Primarily by filling them full of holes. 
Down south, meanwhile, Appius the Honest is just a stone's throw from what I believe is actually the Berber capital. I can't remember which of their cities is the capital. I think it's this one. And I think it might be, yeah, right here, just out of range. He will be reaching that next turn. Over on Leptis Magna, the cavalry has very literally just arrived. We can relieve that city. We can flipping save them. We can do it. And on the western frontier, as it ever was, Aquincum is in trouble and we need to find a way to save it. Or rather, we need to find a way to hold on for just a few turns because the Emperor is coming. This guy is a horde killer. He has got experience killing hordes. He knows how to flipping do it. This is the army that killed the Vandals. But this time, they have got upgraded weapons, upgraded armor. They are stronger than they have ever been before. Look at that comment 10 says. Defense of 29, melee of 12. These guys can flipping murder the hordes if they can get there in time. But if they can't, Cornuntum and Campus Quadi are both looking very, very vulnerable indeed. The Goths could cause a lot of flipping trouble for us yet. And we will find out how all of that goes next time, ladies and gentlemen. Exciting times. I hope you join me for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. This has been Rome Total War with Barbarian Invasion. Thank you very much and goodbye. No, this no, this no, guy's no, enjoying no. that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear! And then oh, in come the chariots! Yeah.